gloomy day in the Brecon Beacons National Park in Wales, but nonetheless, I have come to the Four Waterfalls Walk. I'm hoping to do some nice, moody, long exposures of the uh, Four Waterfalls. And it's really quiet because it's like a horrible, rainy day. Middle of the day, it's pretty much just me. Lovely. I can talk to the camera as much as I want without looking like a maniac. So I'm pretty sure I came the wrong way. In my excitement, I saw a sign for a footpath. I was like, oh, must be up here. But it doesn't matter because I found this cool subject. So these are two like dead trees with the background of the sort of pine trees and the mist. I think it's gonna make quite a nice shot. So let's, uh, let's give it a go and see. So what I'm aiming for with this shot is to separate the background and the foreground. So I'm gonna be using a a wide aperture this lens goes to f4 what i'd quite like as well is for the mist to be moving across the frame this will kind of blur out i guess everything else let's have a look you know it's getting real when the hat goes on backwards okay so we're going to go to f4 Currently it's saying that this shot would be 1 250th of a second if I was to expose it correctly. But I kind of want it to be, as I said, I want the mist to really draw out the background. So let's see if we can get a slower shutter speed by putting on a neutral density filter. A neutral density filter is just a black filter. So if I bring that right to the frame, you might see the camera freak out a little bit. It darkens the image and allows me to get a longer shutter speed. So let's see how this goes. Let's get that histogram up so you can see you got some mid-tones here. Pretty much everything is in that mid-tone with a little bit of highlight. It's probably the sky here. So putting on that filter and wow, everything is really dark. You can see just how much light this stops coming in because it's everything in shadows. So neutral density filter is on. Uh, last shot was 1 80th of a second. <laughs> that was fun. I don't think it's going to make the portfolio though. So I definitely made a wrong turn at some point. I know that the, the river is that way because I can hear it. So I need to try and find a trail that will take me over that way. I mean, I don't know why I didn't look at the map before I left. Absolute idiot. I'm honestly baffled. I've had to backtrack three times this is supposed to be a simple loop walk how could i have messed it up so monumentally i'm considering just going back to the car and you know restarting the entire thing goodness sake on my way to the first waterfall. Typically waterfall photos can be, they're fun, they're fun to take, like long exposures are, are really fun because you get this kind of like fantastic hyper real view of what you're looking at, but they can end up looking a little bit samey if you don't find some kind of interesting other element to the scene, so.
Arriving at the first waterfall, it was pretty magnificent, but the problem is it was a real challenge to shoot. I noticed the hanging tree in front of the frame, and I thought at first it would make a good image, but really it was just kind of distracting. What I'm looking at here is this uh, gorgeous gnarled green moss cover tree with the river behind it so what I'm thinking is the tree will make nice subjects but then you'll also get a bit of dynamicism from the, the river behind so I'm going to go for a, a slow shuffle speed with this one I'm going to make sure the hat's on properly what I've got here is a neutral density filter. This one is made by B and W. So as you can see, it's very dark. This takes about 10 times less the amount of light than would normally come in the camera. So this is gonna make the scene really dark and give me a really slow shutter speed. So I've gone for F5.6. Reason I've chosen 5.6 is because I want the tree to be in focus mostly and the rest of the frame to be out of focus. It's nice, the, the light is really dispersed by the cloud, so it's making this green tree look really, really like glowing. So that's 30 second shutter speed, f5.6, ISO 160, here we go. So as you can see, it's quite an odd image. Yeah, we have the, the river kind of blurred out, but then you have the, this prominent and quite distracting tree. I'm not quite sure if I like it that much right now. Unfortunately, there wasn't any save in this image. Suffering from a clear lack of focal point, it just looks messy. Not a fan of this one. But hey, you gotta be in it to win it, so on to the next one. So this particular waterfall, it's very cool because it looks like it's just like a bunch of sheet rock that the water has slowly carved its way through over the years. So it's like got all these gaps and holes in. Uh, let's go and take a look over here. So what I'm thinking with this one is try and find some foreground interest to frame the waterfalls nicely in the background there looks like a path down to like the shore down here maybe and maybe not but then you have the waterfall over here which looks quite cool even if I don't get a nice photo at least it looks cool magnificent waterfalls behind me were begging for attention but I just couldn't see a subject that I liked. My interest was instead drawn toward the river eroded crack in the rock where the water spilling over created a nice little composition. Another long exposure image, this time shot on the very wide 17-40 lens at 17 mils f8 133 seconds ISO 100. I feel like this image is nearly there. The mood and the atmosphere are both spot on, but it just feels a little unbalanced. Your eye takes a wander through the image and just kind of goes, is that it? And it stops there. This is an image I like, but it's not an image I'm excited about. And at this point, I was starting to feel quite drained by the rain. And honestly, so is my camera. So my colleague said that apparently you can walk under this waterfall. Maybe this one. 
I have no intentions of doing that. I'm already absolutely drenched. It'll be fun in the summer though. So I'm thinking that based on this bit of the water here, I might be able to get a nice bit of foreground interest with the river and then have the uh, waterfall in the background. Unfortunately, because it's quite misty, it's going to look a bit blurry. But we'll give it a go, see how we go. This was quite a simple and easy composition to arrive at. Naturally, the waterfall is your focal point, but leading to that would be some interest in flowing water around the rocks. Ideally, I would have preferred to have more of the frame filled, as the composition as it stands meant that there was some negative space in the top right of the image, which is a little distracting. I ended up with two versions, one in colour with a slightly faster shutter speed, and one in a rich, oily black and white with longer shutter speed. I quite like the little drops of colour and the slightly clearer detail in the water of the first image. But then I also like the rich, deep shadows of the black and white. And the milkiness of the water due to the long shutter speed. I'd be interested to know your thoughts on which version you prefer. Perhaps you feel long exposures in black and white are overdone. Maybe you think the colour does nothing for the image and in fact just takes away from the subject matter. Either way, let me know in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. 